If you've been playing poker for a while, chances are you put in most of your study time working on post-flop strategy, which is totally fine and reasonable. However, even advanced players can make a lot of pre-flop mistakes. Today we're going to talk about eight of those and talk about some general tips for playing pre-flop a lot better, even if you've been playing poker for a while. Let's get started. Good morning, how are we doing today? My name is James Sweeney, aka Split Suit, and today I wanna to talk about preflop. Most players, when they start to learn poker, they learn preflop, get a general basic strategy, and then pretty much move on and focus heavily, heavily on postflop, which makes sense. However, a lot of players will still have preflop blunders and they won't really go back and fix these things as often as they should. So hopefully this video helped point you in the right direction, especially if your preflop strategy has gotten a little bit stagnant. All right, so tip number one is to avoid calling too much preflop. Now in the era a very modern aggressive poker a lot of players don't have a tremendous amount of prefob calling in their range however some players do and especially if you've been playing something like live cash or you have really really big post flop edges you might have introduced a few too many calls into your overall prefob strategy however prefob calling is usually going to be more focused around the button or especially the big blind and these two positions make a lot of sense when you're on the button and you're calling a prefob raise you're in a situation where you're going to have position going post flop and there's only a couple players left to act after you and from the big blind you're getting that discount and if you look at solver work over the years a lot of the times that solver output is going to mimic this as well you're going to see a big spike in button calls and big blind calls and most other positions are going to be much much lower in terms of overall calling of open raises and even isolation raises so if you've been getting a little bit lazy and letting a few too many calls creep into your prefab strategy again especially against open raises and also isolation raises definitely make sure to rethink that and unless you can very clearly articulate why you're calling a preflop raise, chances are just three better fold it instead. Now, tip number two may seem to contradict this, but you should actually be defending more often as their raise sizes get smaller. Now, this is heavily applicable in the blinds, especially the big blind when you're facing a steal or an open raise in general, thinking about your overall defense frequency is very, very important. And as their overall raise size gets smaller, you should actually be defending much, much more often, which can Conversely, means that when their raise size is larger, so you're playing something like a live cash game where their open raise size is something like four or five or six big blinds, you should be defending that far, far less often than when you're playing something like an online cash game and that raise size is something like two, two and a half or three big blinds instead. In fact, if we look at a chart taken out of my book, GTO Gems, if you're looking at a two big blind open raise from your opponent and you're in the big blind, you should be defending roughly two thirds of the time. At two and a half big blind open raise size for them, you should be defending 44% of the time total and if they open to three big blinds you should be defending about a third of the time and and for most people these defense frequencies are going to be much much higher than what they use right this moment now of course when we're talking about defense we're just talking about the overall hands that you should be continuing with aka not folding against that open raise size and from the big blind again you're getting that price discount which is very nice and part of the reason why you're seeing that much higher defense frequency but what's really important to understand is that as their open raise size gets larger and larger you will be defending less often, but a higher density of your defense frequency is actually going to be made up of three bets. Again, if we look at a chart from GTO Gems, you notice that against a two big blind open raise size, our overall defense range, 16% of that is getting three bet versus a four big blind open raise size, 77% of our overall defense range is going to be three bets as opposed to calls. So this is really important. Yes, you are defending less often against that larger open raise size. However, a larger percentage of of your continuance is going to be three bets instead of calls. That's very, very important to note and honestly not the way that enough players, especially live cash cam players, approach these situations. Tip number three is to stick to GTO preflop ranges. So most of the free range charts you're gonna find online are gonna be more focused on exploitative play. And exploitative play is definitely the name of the game overall, but what if you don't have great information? What if you haven't been playing against a certain player pool for a long time? You don't really know exactly how you should be looking to exploit because you don't know exactly what information is in the player pool or against the specific players at your table. Well, this is exactly where GTO ranges really shine. They're very, very sharp ranges. They keep you in the right ballpark, make sure your frequencies are right on track, and the ranges over time with a little bit of time and practice are definitely going to meld into your brain. If nothing else, remembering some of the open race sizes, well, pretty much all of them from all positions, and then also a decent chunk of three betting ranges is going to be huge and very, very valuable, makes your prefab game much, much easier, and also 
also makes you much tougher to play against without talking about purely exploitative ranges that you find online that are usually going to be a little bit too tight because if you are an advanced player and you have a post fob skill set you want to make sure that you're playing enough hands prefob but you're not going overboard with the wrong hands or worse playing way too tight and minimizing your overall edge that you can actually use and if you're looking for some great gto ranges to use i would highly suggest checking out the gto ranges app from redshift poker just search for it in your apple or android app store download it all of the open ranges are totally totally free or you can unlock the app and get everything including three bet ranges four bet ranges etc it really really helps and make sure that you have all of those ranges right in your pocket you can quickly review them when you need to when you're doing study sessions and go from there again gto ranges app from redshift poker or just visit redshiftpoker.com app to fire it up and check it out tip number four is to be on the lookout for exploitative opportunities so this may look to contradict the previous point but again if you don't have information stick to the gto stuff if you do have some information look for those exploitative opportunities so you can take advantage of a, whatever strategic kink or frequency kink is in your opponent's overall strategy so let's just take a basic example where you're playing live cash under the gun open raises fold drawn to you on the button and you're deciding what you want to do now if you pull this up in the app you'll notice that the app says you should be three betting this about four percent of the time and that is the gto response in this exact spot however let's think about the exploitative opportunity because if we then look a step further let's just say that as the button we decide to three bet with whatever hand we currently have let's just say that our opponent is actually not going to be continuing properly right so the overall solver says that the under the gun player once the blinds fold should be defending this about half the time let's say they were actually going to be folding 75 percent of the time well, in that case, how would you exploitatively respond? Well, you can start throwing in more air three bets and simply taking advantage of the fact that your opponent is not continuing often enough. And as such, you can make pure profit simply by applying that pressure and watching them melt away preflop. That is a great way to say, okay, what is the actual GTO response in a given situation? What is the exploitative opportunity given in the information we have? And if we know that our opponent is an overfolder against aggression, well, this is a great time to three bet, add more crap into our three betting range and just print the fact that under the gun is making some serious strategic blunders. Now, of course, you want to be careful about going too, too far with it since players will eventually get wind of what you're doing and maybe start taking advantage of you in return. But in the meantime, look for more three betting opportunities, possibly more four betting opportunities. And you're probably going to find some easy situations where you can make extra money by finding these exploitative opportunities. Yes, the GTO ranges are great, but if you understand where your opponents are deviating from that, the exploitative opportunities can be wonderful and extremely, extremely lucrative. Tip number five, understand the preflop ranges should be driven by equity. So unless you're in a situation where your opponent is going to fold a tremendous amount of the time against your preflop aggression, let's just say they're going to fold like 95% of the time against your three bet. Well, sure, your cards don't matter as much. You're not going to play postflop as often and as such, whatever, do what you want with your preflop pan selection. However, as your opponents are folding less and less often preflop, you're going to have to play postflop more and more often. And as such, having hands that have some equity is going to be much, much better rather than using something like queen deuce offsuit using something like ace three suited or king nine suited is going to be much much better which means even in the example we were looking at earlier we're under the gun open and we were thinking about expanding our button three betting range it would be best to expand this range by adding things like more ace x suited ace deuce to ace five offsuit more of the high king x suited like king eight suited and king seven suited that would be far better to use hands like that rather than just throwing in any old jack four offsuit or three deuce suited something like that Again, if you're going to have to play post flop again, your opponent's not folding every single time. You're saying they're just folding more often than they should. Yes, you can expand that range in an exploitative way, but you don't want to go nuts and you definitely don't want to use the wrong preflop hand selection unless you have that really, really great information that your opponent is just going to overfold way too often, either immediately or very, very quickly in the hand post flop. The next tip is to play all hands to their max EV and avoid loss leaders at all costs. So while not everyone does this, some players certainly do and the concept is essentially that players will think okay well i will throw in some loss leaders into my ranges and because of that it's going to boost the ev of other hands in my range so if i throw in say some seven deuce offsuit in my under the gun open raising range then inherently i'm boosting the ev of my aces and kings since my range is wider people are going to make more mistakes against it and because of that i can make more with my monster hands when i occasionally throw in these loss leaders that is not the way to think about this this has been disproven by the solvers both preflop and postflop please do not fall 
fall into this trap, play your hands prefop to their max EV and post fop as well, and avoid thinking that lost leaders are going to do any sort of boosting for you. They just simply won't. And again, when you tie this in with our previous tip about hands driven by equity, this is definitely going to play right into this. So again, maximize the EV, avoid, avoid lost leaders, please. Tip number seven is to look for sizing opportunities. A lot of players that have been playing for a while tend to have very, very rote prefob strategies. They know their open raise sizes from spots. They know their three bet sizes from spots. They know their ranges for those kind of things as well. And they just kind of default use them and they don't typically give them much of a second thought, especially in real time. And this is something that I would definitely caution against. Be on the lookout for sizing opportunities where you can go bigger or go smaller and still generate really, really good results. Atypical sizing can sometimes produce very, very atypical results. And if you're careful with this, it can provide the atypical result in the positive direction. Again, if you're careful and you're on the lookout for these things. And the three biggest areas where I look for these are going to be open raise sizes. So essentially, if I go larger in a situation, is that going to create a better or worse environment for me? Same thing with smaller. Also three betting. If you look at a situation where you could say risk an extra two big blinds on your overall three bet size, yes, technically the break even percentage for your three bet goes up. But if all of a sudden that extra two big blinds prefop can add a tremendous amount of extra folds into your opponent's strategy, well, that can do very, very good things for you. And maybe you actually end up increasing their fold against your three bet percentage by a magnificent frequency. And if so, that can be very, very good for finding extra three bets in your own game. And another area I look for are four bets and specifically looking for smaller size four bets. Again, can I risk less and still generate the exact same amount of folds for my opponent? In a lot of different spots, you probably can, especially when you have positions. So be on the lookout for this. If you can risk a little bit less with bluffs or risk a little bit more and generate tremendous amount of extra folds prefop, this can be very, very good. But if you just stick to a totally, totally rote sizing strategy prefop, you're going to totally miss these opportunities. And this is something that you definitely want to get in the habit of looking for. So when you're studying hands off table, ask yourself these questions. That way in real time, you're better suited to say, okay, yep, this is a spot where I can definitely increase my size and do a lot of very good things for me. Again, looking for those exploitative opportunities through sizing, very, very good. Tip number eight is to mix in some stronger hands when calling prefop. This may seem like a weird tip on the heels of all this talk about aggression and looking for creative sizing and creative options. However, this is very important to understand and it's even solver approved. If you look at a situation, say you're playing live cash, under the gun opens, folds around to you in the cutoff, you actually notice that the solver suggests mixing with pocket kings. Yes, pocket aces is a pure three bet, but pocket kings is a three bet 81% of the time and a call the other 19% of the time. Queens is also a mix, but actually a larger chunk of it is getting flatted in this spot. So a lot of players will just default three bet kings plus every single time. And while that's totally fine and it exploitatively works, there are plenty of situations where you should mix in some calls even with these stronger hands prefop. And you may think, oh, well, that's just against an under the gun open. Okay, well, let's switch that up. Take the exact same live environment, but now say the hijack open raises instead, folds around to you on the button. Notice, yes, aces and kings still gonna be pure three bets. However, pocket queens, still a mix. Pocket jacks, still a mix between three betting and calling. Even ace king offsuit is going to be a mix as well. Ace king suited, however, is a pure three bet in this exact situation. And this is all just looking at this basic spot with no other information. If you had exploitative information, say you thought you could call here and it would induce more squeezes from the players behind you, that that could throw in even more reason to look for things like calling some of these stronger hands to buff up your range when you do induce that squeeze. Again, if you assume that you're going to induce that squeeze a good chunk of the time. So again, when you have information, you can look for tons of these different exploitative opportunities and you can even go further with some of these when compared to looking at the pure solver output. But if you don't have any of that pure exploitative information, sticking to those GT real ranges like we talked about earlier, it's gonna be just, just fine. And I did wanna leave you with a bonus tip as well, and that's if things in your prefop strategy are getting a little bit stagnant, I would highly suggest looking to put in like a 50% VPIP session or 100% VPIP session where you're playing tons and tons of extra hands prefop. Because what this is gonna force you to do is start thinking really, really creatively and start saying, okay, well, where are spots where I can just bluff a tremendous amount more? Because obviously if you're playing that many more hands prefop, it's not like you're getting that many more strong hands, so you're throwing in more and more weak stuff, and as such, you have to learn how to contend against that. And obviously don't do this at your normal limit, move down and play something that's completely inconsequential stakes. Even if you play live cash, you can do this in a small online room like 2NL or 5NL, something like that, and just give it a try. And just do it for, I don't know, 50 to 100 hands. But if you work on this, it will help you start finding some extra spots, start thinking more creatively. And even if you just pull a couple of gems from that 
kind of session into your real game that can help a tremendous amount it can really revitalize you help you find some extra spots and all that's really good at the end of the day so hopefully that's a nice little bonus tip in case your prefab strategy is feeling a little bit boring and stagnant this can help a tremendous amount and if you want to go even further with your prefab strategy i would highly suggest checking out my prefab and math workbook if you haven't already this workbook is really really solid and lays out tons and tons of exercises plus has a full answer key for improving your prefab strategy and running you through a lot of the spots that we talked about today you're going to look at things like isolating and three bedding and squeezing and four bedding going all in prefab as well as just basic math stuff like combos and blockers and pot odds and all that sort of fun stuff so that way you can put in this kind of work off table get a lot stronger with it and in real time you're not wasting as much brain power trying to do raw calculations you have a raw feel for that from the work you did in this workbook splitsuit.com slash prefop to learn more or look for the prefop and math workbook on amazon if you're looking for the paperback and by the way the paperback is full color the whole thing comes with a complimentary course as well to help you run through all of these exercises you know exactly what to do and how to do them well and it also comes with the full answer key so you know exactly if you got the right answer or if you need a little bit of extra practice on a particular section again splitsuit.com slash prefop to learn more so that's going to wrap it up for this one i really hope you enjoyed if you have any comments or questions please don't hesitate to let me know and if you want to see a post flop video like this instead of just talking about prefop like we did in this one but also look at post flop too let me know maybe i'll make one of those in the near future but that's going to wrap it for this one i really hope you enjoyed if you need anything let me know otherwise as always good luck out there and happy grinding